Hello, my name is Captain Sean Fluharty. I work for the Marion Fire Department and uh, Kirkwood Workplace Connections has asked me to do a video on career talks, um, basically dealing with Marion Fire Department. So um, we're trying to do this online um, with the whole COVID thing. So um, typically we do this in the classroom, it's a little more interactive, but we'll try to make this work. Um, I've been with Marion Fire Department for almost 18 years now. So I've um, seen a lot of different stuff, um, held quite a few different positions. The one nice thing about the fire department is um, there are a variety of positions and um, no one day is the same, which is kind of a nice variety. So if you like that kind of thing. Um, I do have a PowerPoint here that I'm gonna bring up. All right, a couple of pictures of a, a fire and a gas leak we had. Um, one of the things we commonly get asked is, is, you know, what's the fire station look like? So I went through and basically just did a video of starting off with our apparatus bay, and I'll play that for you now. Um, we do have two fire stations in Marion, um, one on the east side, one on the west side. We are currently building a third station, which is kind of on the northwest side. Um, the tour that I'm going to give you in the video is of our station two, which is kind of our headquarters station right now. All right, I'm going to take you on a tour of our apparatus bay out here at station two, which is our main station. Basically, in our first bay, we have our medic two truck, which is our paramedic SUV out of the station. Behind it is engine 92, which is one of our township engines, which covers kind of a rural area with that fire hydrant, so it's got a little bit more water on it. The next bay over is engine 91, which is our main city fire engine for the east side of the city of Marion. This is aerial two, it's our 95 foot aerial ladder with a platform used for our larger multi-story buildings or commercial buildings. And this is our rescue truck, which we use for a little bit of everything, our auto extrication, high angle rescue, somebody stuck down in a trench, anything like that. Stuck in an elevator, all kinds of things for that vehicle. An ambulance, which actually belongs to the ambulance service in Cedar Rapids, if they don't have one available, then we can run that so that people in Marion pretty much always have an ambulance. Here's kind of the back side of the ladder truck. And then our battalion chief vehicle, which is kind of the person who's in charge of the shift for both stations. All right, so that's kind of our apparatus bay or where our trucks are at. Um, I'm now gonna show you just kind of our living quarters, um, our bedrooms, our day room area. Um, a lot of people think that all we do is sit around recliners all day long and, and that is certainly not the case. And I'll get into that here in just a little bit. This is our back hallway or our living quarters area. Basically just has six bedrooms. bathrooms and in our kitchen and our like living room area and then you go back down this way and that gets you to our apparatus bay or where the trucks are at All right, so the, one of the most common questions we get is, what do you have to do to become a firefighter? And a lot of people think maybe it's kind of an easy job to get, and it's actually a pretty tough or pretty competitive job to get. So the minimum requirements um, just to apply to the fire department is you have to have a high school diploma or equivalent. You have to be nationally certified as an emergency medical technician. So there's like three different levels of emergency medical services. There's the basic EMT, which is like a 
a semester long class at Kirkwood. There's an advanced EMT and then there's a paramedic. So the paramedic's a two year degree. Um, most of our people are paramedics, but to apply, you have to be an emergency medical technician. And then you have to pass a civil service test, which consists of a written test, a physical agility test, and then at least one interview. So the civil service test, or the written test, excuse me, is quite frankly, a lot like the Iowa assessments. Um, there's a little bit more to it, but it's, it's math and English and basic comprehension and stuff. Um, so you basically test, take the written test and there's a pass fail score, maybe 85%, 80%. Um, and if you pass that, then you move on to the physical agility test. Um, you are scored on your written test and that's largely a large part of your final score. The physical agility is a lot of firefighting stuff. It's um, starting off on a, uh, like a step mill, which is kind of a treadmill with steps um, with a bunch of weight on you and you gotta do three and a half minutes on that. And then there's dragging hose, putting up ladders, pulling or dragging dummies, carrying saws, um, just doing a lot of heavy work, but it's certainly passable if you prepare for it. Um, but that's a physical agility test and that's pass fail. So if you pass that, and you've got a good score on your written test, then we basically have a list ranked in order based on your test score. From that, we will conduct interviews and we will then um, hire people from that list. A lot of people think, oh, your score is everything. And if you're number one on the list, you're guaranteed a job. That is not correct. We look at a lot of variables. We look at your work history. We look at your job references. We look at your personal references. If you're number one on the list, but we start calling you know, your references or your former employers and they start saying, oh, this person wasn't very dependable, um, they're not very trustworthy, being number one on the list doesn't do you a whole lot of good. If you're number 15 on the list, but everybody we call says really great things about you, you got an okay shot of getting a job. So score is not everything, but you have to pass the written and the physical agility and, and get on the list just to be considered. It's desired to have your state or national firefighter one certification. That is strictly a, um, basically a test or firefighting skills um, that is kind of the national standard. Um, if you don't have it, we will certainly provide it um, once you start. Salary and benefits, um, starting salary for a firefighter EMT is 48,676 or 1667 an hour. If you're a paramedic, you get paid a little bit more. Um, other benefits um, are earned vacation, sick time every month, workman's comp, health and dental, and then you can retire after 22 years and, and reaching age 55 with a full pension. And a lot of people don't know what a pension is, but basically we put in so much a month, it's about nine and a half percent, the city puts in money. And then at the age of 55, you can retire and you're guaranteed a certain amount of money. So it's kind of like a 401k or something like that, but it's, it's kind of a, it's a better program and it's um, something that you can retire at 55 um, and then still have a pretty good retirement program. So that's one benefit. Um, I have people with the starting salary, so geez, I can make a lot more money in another career. And that is absolutely true. You can, um, but the pension is what a lot of people kind of like about it. The other thing about the money is um, you will find that most people who work either in fire departments or police departments or, or EMS or whatever for ambulances, yeah, we like to have enough money to live off of, but we're really doing it because we like to help people and, and the variety of calls and everything else. But that's kind of the, the, salary and benefits part. The work hours, most people work an eight hour day. A lot of them work during the day, daytime hours. We work a 24 hour shift. So we work from 7 a.m. till 7 a.m. the following morning. Um, we work 24 on and then 48 off. So a lot of people say, oh, you have the best schedule in the work world. You work one every three days, which is true, but it ends up being a 56 hour work week. So a lot of people get paid overtime after 40, we do not, we work a 56 hour work week. One of the things a lot of people don't think about is that you basically spend a third of your life at the fire station. So every third night you're away from your, your kids if you have them. Um, so you work Christmases, you work birthdays, you work anniversaries. So you work every third day. So that's kind of the downside. I'm sure everybody's seen the TV shows where the, everybody's sitting around, all the firefighters are sitting around the recliners or playing cards or whatever. Um, and I'm not going to tell you that doesn't happen maybe at some really large departments, but that is certainly not the case here. So a typical day at the Marion Fire Station is first thing in the morning, we start off checking all of our equipment, all the medical vehicles and equipment, because if a call comes in at 715, for somebody having a heart attack, it'd be really bad if our heart monitor battery was 
not working or was dead or something. So we check everything. With that being said, obviously when we get back from a call, we restock everything. We charge batteries, change batteries, whatever needs to be done. But at the beginning of each shift, we check everything to make sure it's ready for that day. At eight o'clock, we eat breakfast. And with that being said is, it's not just eating breakfast, it's kind of the plan for the day. Do we have tours? Do we have training scheduled? Kind of what's going on for that day. And then at nine o'clock, we have a detailed check of each apparatus. So we check kind of the big things in the morning, but then um, for the detailed check, like if it's our ladder truck, we're going to put the ladder up in the air, we're gonna spin it around, we're gonna run it through the whole rotation, we're gonna run all the saws and the fans and all of our small engines. Uh, we're gonna check all the fluids on the vehicles, we're gonna check tires, we're gonna make sure everything's in all the compartments and we're just gonna make sure everything's ready to go for that particular vehicle that day. Um, noon we eat lunch. I tell a lot of times people, if you, if you don't like learning, you maybe don't wanna be a firefighter because almost every afternoon at one, we're doing some kind of training. Um, we can also be doing inspections or maintenance, things like that, but frequently we're doing training. That can be anything from sitting in a classroom, doing a PowerPoint, to doing something online, to pulling hose lines, to cutting apart cars, to actually fighting fires. Um, but we're, most of our afternoons are spent doing some form of training. Five o'clock is eat supper. Six to eight is kind of that leisure time. That's when we can actually kick back in the chairs, watch TV, hang out in our rooms, do whatever. But then from eight to 10 is we clean, we clean the stations and trucks. Um, I don't know if any of you have been to the fire station, but it's typically very clean. Um, our trucks and stuff are very expensive, um, so we really, really take care of them. If a truck goes out the door, um, it gets dusted and or washed depending on what needs to be done. All the floors get clean, the toilets get clean, not really everybody's favorite job, but we, we keep a really good care of our, of our stations and our equipment. And then 10 to six is sleep. And I, I say that kind of jokingly because we can sleep at the fire station, but from the time that the tones go off till the time we have to be in the truck and going out the door is 60 seconds. So if you think about that, the next time you're in bed in the morning and your alarm goes off and you roll over and hit snooze two or three times, that's not really an option. We have 60 seconds from the time the bell goes off till we're out of bed, shoes on, grab our gear and in the truck. So I just gave you this wonderful hour by hour thing for the day, um, which if there was absolutely no calls, that would be the way the day would go. But calls come in anytime, day or night, we average roughly 13 calls a day. So each call takes 30 to 60 minutes, depending on the call. And then out of that, when you come back, one of the people who goes on a call has to write a report for each call. And that can take anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour as well. So if you take a 24 hour period with 13 calls, you can say, or you can see that we spend quite a bit of time just going on calls and writing reports. So my little day, my hour by hour thing is obviously what we try to do. But if we have calls, then, then that stops everything and we move on. Personality for the job is good leadership skills. Basically, as a firefighter, you're gonna be called for all kinds of situations and they're always calling you because they don't know what else to do and they, they need help with something. I tell people a lot of times, when you're being called as a firefighter, you're being called on somebody's worst day. Um, their house is on fire potentially, their family member's not breathing, somebody's bleeding, um, somebody's trapped in a car, okay? And they expect you to be able to fix whatever they called you for, okay? So good leadership skills. Um, obviously we have one person in charge of each call, but everybody kind of has to be a leader to some extent. Able to remain calm in a stressful situation. We go to very stressful situations, people not breathing, um, obviously people stuck in fires, things like that, okay? And sometimes even if you're seeing something like on a medical call where you know it's really bad, you can't really portray that to the patient because that only makes them more stressed out. So you have to be able to remain calm. Able to work in dangerous situations? Yeah, if somebody has a car wreck in blizzard conditions, even though they're telling everybody else to stay inside, we're still gonna go out and help you, okay? Um, severe weather. Um, car accidents, if somebody's involved in a car accident on the highway or the interstate, we're still out there with cars going by. We try to control it as much as we can, okay? Able to work on all weather conditions I already kind of talked about. Desire to continue learning. Like I said, a lot of our day or almost every afternoon is some form of learning. Could be just reviewing streets, could be reviewing 
um, operating guidelines, stuff like that. But a lot of it is um, just hands-on stuff and either medical skills or fire skills or rescue skills or anything. Ability to work and live with your coworkers for 24 hours at a time. I kind of equate that to like living with brothers and sisters. Okay, you like them, but you get on each other's nerves sometimes. And it's no different here at the fire station. There's, there's people that you love to work with. There's people who they get on your nerves every now and again. But the difference between a fire department job and maybe somebody who works in an office is if you don't really like the person next to you, that's okay. But if I don't like the person I'm working with at the fire station and I'm out taking care of your parent who's having chest pain, we better be able to get along and get the job done. Okay, so we get on each other's nerves sometimes, but never to the point that we can't work with each other when we have to. Okay, so that's one of the things we look at when we are doing our hiring is can you get along with people and, and how do you handle conflict? All right, one of the other questions I get quite a bit is, is what does a firefighter look like when they're all dressed out or, or how does the whole gear thing work? So here's just a video of one of our firefighters putting his gear on. All right, this is Evan, one of our firefighters. He's gonna show us how to put on our full gear, which is our bunker gear and our air pack. So, yep. So we can start with our Nomite hood, which basically protects our neck and our ears. Um, you'll notice that his boots are around his pants, so that way you basically pull the pants and the boots up, and you're all set to go. Zips up, Velcros, put his clip on. You'll notice that most of our gear has kind of two layers. You've got the zipper layer and then the Velcro, and that's just basically double edge so that it protects a little bit better. Putting his face piece on, you'll notice his collar's up and Velcro that protects the neck. So now I pulled the Nomad's hood up, which protects his ears. Puts his helmet on. His hands are still exposed, but that's because he's still got to put his air pack on. And his air pack on, he's not quite on air yet, but we're all ready to go. His gloves are now on, he's now putting his regulator in, so he's on air, and now he's basically ready to go in. All right, cool. Thanks, Evan. All right, that's kind of the presentation for careers of the Marion Fire Department. Um, we typically do this in the schools where we have a lot more interaction with kids where people can ask questions and we don't have that with this platform, unfortunately. Um, hopefully this is informational. Um, if you have questions about the Marion Fire Department, you can basically reach out to me at 373-8086. Thank you for your time and watching this presentation.